Audi R8 The Basics The MK2 R8 was launched in 2015, replacing the much-loved original that had been around since 2006. It is twinned with the Lamborghini Huracan, sharing the same high revving engine and aluminium, composite platform. Said engine is probably one of the last of its kind, we re unlikely to see many more mainstream supercars with a cylinder count in double digits, cubic capacity starting with a 5, and without turbochargers. This time there is no manual version, all are 8s using a 7-speed twin-clutch S-tronic gearbox, and all cars are all-wheel drive, although very much rear-biased. Emptying a little interesting mud into the waters, from early 2018 another, limited edition version called the R8 RWS joins the range, the odd name sounds like rear-wheel steering, but actually stands for rear-wheel series at LLB rear-wheel drive. That makes the car tested here, the R8 V10 Coupe, the cheapest, relatively speaking, route into all-wheel drive R8 ownership. At the time of writing, the R8 range looks like this. R8 RWS Coupe, limited numbers, 112,450 pounds. R8 RWS Spider, limited numbers, 121,140 pounds. R8 V10 Coupe. 126,130 pounds. R8 V10 Spider, 134,820 pounds. R8 V10 Plus Coupe, 141,130 pounds. R8 V10 Plus Spider, 149,820 pounds. Prices quoted winter 2017. What's the difference between the regular Audi R8 V10 and the R8 V10 Plus? Apart from the extra power? Sizable 69 bhp power hike aside, headline R8 V10 Plus upgrades include 40 kg weight reduction Ceramic brake discs Shorter gear ratios Stiffer suspension Fixed carbon rear wing Extra performance driving modes they add up to a 15,000 pounds price increase over the regular R8 V10 tested here. In a previous diary entry in our long-term Audi R8 V10 Plus test, I compared the Plus back-to-back -back with a regular V10 and in many ways I still believe the more affordable model is actually the better road car. Its wavy steel discs are less oversensitively grabby than the ceramics from cold, making it easier to drive smoothly around town and they restill plenty powerful when you need them. The regular car's pop-up spoiler lies flush with the tail when it has not deployed, which looks a little subtler than the fixed carbon ironing board on the Plus, and you probably one t miss the stiffer suspension on UK roads. What you do miss with the regular V10 Plus is bragging rights, it s slower from 0 to 62 miles per hour. 3.5 seconds for the V10 versus 3.2 for the V10 Plus, and at top speed, 199 miles per hour versus 205, if that matters to you. How good is the R8 at being a long distance tourer? Over short distances, the R8 is surely one of the most user friendly supercars there has ever been. No speed bump is too high, no parking space too tight, no weather too foul. My main reservations about a long trip, based on many long motorway schleps in our long termer, is the seat's lack of lumbar support, and the seriously small boot. Compared with a Porsche 911, a McLaren Sports Series, or even a Ferrari 488, all of which have genuinely sizable frunks, the space under the R8S bonnet really is tight probably partly because of the extra set of drive shafts up front. IV previously had to drive our long-termer with bags belted into the passenger seat alongside me, but for the Nürburgring trip the R8S boot actually managed to swallow multiple squashy bags as well as photographer Tom Chapman's gear, without having to squeeze too much of it onto the luggage shelf behind the seats. By the time we leave the channel tunnel, however, the interior is already a heaving sea of clutter, water bottles, food wrappers, documents etc there isn't a huge amount of space to put things within the cabin, 
Although there are a couple of small cup holders between the seats, door pockets and a sliding lid cubby ahead of the gear selector, by supercar standards it could be far worse. Phones, Babylon's came.